Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is your friendly neighborhood man here, and today we are going to be delving into the wonderful world of Windows Batch Files. Try saying that ten times fast. Anyways, as you probably know, this is tutorial series is going to be all about batch scripting, and it's going to be for every version of Windows out there, unless you're from like, what, the 60s or something, it's, Windows didn't even exist then. But anyways, if you have Windows, you know, these tutorials are for you. Mac users, I'm sorry, but, you know, you can try following along, but you're probably not going to be able to do anything at all. I have pretty much the equivalent to this, Apple Script, in another series, so you can go check that out if you want. But if you have Windows, you don't really need anything else. I'm going to be using a text editor, Notepad++, up here. Oh, uh, you don't need it. It just makes uh, your programming a little easier. Syntax highlighting has a lot of cool features, but you don't need it, of course. So, I'm just going to explain real quickly what Windows Batch Scripting is. So, if any of you have heard of the command line, I'm going to open this up right now. CMD. I don't care about the color scheme right now. Keep yes. Excellent. Okay, let's try this once again. Command. So, this is the command line. It allows you to, you know, transfer text input into commands to the computer instead of using the GUI, so you can do things like delete files, copy files, and that sort of thing. Batch files pretty much operate the command, or automate, excuse me, the command line, and they also take user input, and it can process it. So, all of the commands that I use, you can type in here, and it'll run exactly the same, and you can also use this to find help about each command. But let's get into actually making the file. So, for, you know, basic windows, you can go new, text document. Now, this isn't a batch file on its own. If you open up, it'll open up, you know, just text. But to make this a batch file, let's just open this once again. File, save as. Now, you can name this what you want. I'm going to name this test. So, test.bat. The .bat is the file extension for the batch file. You can either make .bat or .cmd, but I'm going to stick with .bat. Now we're going to down here and click all files. Make sure it is saved where you want to. I'm going to save this to the desktop. So save. And let's move this up. And it, you can see over here we have test over here. And it's a little icon which means it is a batch file. So once you have this you can just delete this. So delete. Yes. So if you want to edit this you can just go right click and edit. And it will open up in notepad. And you can write all of your code in here. Now I like to use Notepad++, so I'm going to show you how to create a batch file in Notepad++. So let's go test, let's just delete this. Open up Notepad++. File, save as, test. We're going to go down here and there's this long list of file extensions, so just find .bat. And make sure to save to your desktop or wherever you want it, save. And... Here you go, we have our test batch file. No, oh, I did not mean to do that. So say you want to edit this in Notepad, so right click and edit with Notepad++, but since I already have it open, I don't need to do that. So now we can start writing code. So the very first thing you're going to write is at echo off. Now what this does, it's pretty much just clean up of your program, a lot of the backstage stuff that's going on is not going to be shown to your user. A lot of times you're going to want this off instead of on, you know, just for readability and stuff. Anyways, I'm just going to explain some of the syntax of Windows batch files. So the Windows command processor, which I already showed you, it interprets batch files line by line. So each line, you'll write a new command. So add echo off here, then we go to a new line, write a new command here, go to a new line, write a new command here. So you can't have like, so add echo off here and just command here, it's not going to work. It goes like this, command 1, command 2, command 3, etc, etc, all the way down the line. So I'm going to show you some very basic commands today. The echo command is the first thing, so echo, and let's do hello world, programmers must. Now what this is going to do is print out hello world. You know, you can put any text you want here, but a world, you know, basic program stuff. So let's just save this. If you were using Notepad, you just go File, Save. So let's minimize this, open this up. Now, as you can see, we have this black screen over here. And if you have really quick eyes, you can see Hello World is printed. But 
you know, there's nothing wrong with our program. This is just the way Windows interprets this. So it's going to go down here, add echo off. It's going to go to a new line, echo hello world. So it prints out hello world successfully. Now it returns the new line down here, but it sees there's nothing down here, so it closes the window. Now to get around this, we can use the pause command. The pause command pauses the execution of your script until the user provides input. So we're just going to write pause down here, save, minimize, and open this back up. Now as you see, we have hello world printed, and press any key to continue, which is generated by the pause command. So if I hit any key, it's going to go and return a new line down here and see there's nothing, and close. So I'm just going to press enter, and our program closes. Now I can write more code down here, but... Um, you know, there's really nothing else to show you, except for comments. Now, comments are just pretty much, what? They're English. Plain English, you can insert into your code to explain bits and pieces of it. So say, you know, eventually you could be writing very large, you know, 50, 100 line, or even bigger, you know, batch files, giant text adventures if you feel ambitious. And sometimes, you know, it may feel a little confusing if you go back to a function or something like that and you don't know what it's doing. You can leave comments for yourself or other people in your code by doing something like this. So REM, then everything after this is a comment and is going to be ignored by the Windows command processor. So this is a comment. And you can just write whatever you want here. So I'm just going to write some normal code around this. So I at echo off down here. And then echo hello world. And then finally pause. So we're going to ignore this as a comment and going to print out exactly what we did last time. So save this. And you can see nothing has changed. So you can put comments anywhere you want in your code. How you comment is up to you, it's your program. I suggest, you know, not filling your program up with comments because acting it confusing, but you know. Say you have something that can be kind of cryptic, just use a comment to remind yourself, explain it a bit. It'll help you in the long run, trust me. So I'm just going to show you one more thing, what happens if you turn at echo on. So let's just save this. And see everything that is returned, so you know, all the stuff behind here and then the command, then what happens afterwards, just... So if you have a bunch of comments, it's going to spit them out. If you have stuff like this, it's just... It's going to get really confusing and really annoying to have to look at this every single time. So pretty much 99% of the time you're going to want to turn at echo off. Also I guess I should mention the at makes sure that this line is not printed out. So I guess at the world, that's not going to print anything out. So the at line, pretty much what it'll do, if I get rid of this, ah, what am I doing? We go. Well, I guess it's just use for echo off. Um, you can go look up the function of the act man. It's very cryptic, and I don't really know how to decipher it for you guys. So, other than that, this is going to be all for today. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.